Hi, welcome to the second video I'm doing in response to a series called Eight Ridiculous Myths About Meat Consumption, which is an article written by Chris Gunners of Authority Nutrition. The second myth that he says about meat consumption is that meat is high in saturated fat and cholesterol. For now, I'll skip to Gunners' bottom line. It is true that meat tends to be high in saturated fat and cholesterol, but this is not a cause for concern because they do not have adverse effects on blood cholesterol or increase the risk of heart disease. This is what Durian Ryder had to say about Gunner's assertion. Hey doc, I want to eat bacon, eggs for breakfast, lunch and dinner and steak and just eat fat, 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 500 grams of fat a day, kilo of fat a day. Dude, you're going to block your arteries? <laughs> the average heart attack in Australia costs the taxpayer $280,000 approximately, US. $280,000 for every hard attack in Australia. Our biggest export is grass-fed beef. Now I'll respond to each statement that Gunners makes about saturated fat and cholesterol and show how the way he is interpreting the studies he links to is misleading people into thinking that saturated fat and cholesterol is good for us and at worst not harmful. Gunners says, one of the main arguments against meat is that it tends to be high in both saturated fat and cholesterol. But this isn't really a cause for concern because new science has shown both of them to be harmless. Despite being seen as something to be feared, cholesterol is actually a vital molecule in the body. It is found in every cell membrane and used to make hormones. The liver produces large amounts of it to make sure we always have enough. So even Gunners agrees that we don't need to get any cholesterol from our diet. Gunners then proceeds to say, when we get a lot of cholesterol from the diet, the liver just produces less of it instead, so the total amount doesn't change much. Gunners also says in about 70% of people, cholesterol in the diet has negligible effects on cholesterol in the blood. However, the studies that Gunners links to are just those studies that show that there is a ceiling effect at which adding dietary cholesterol to a diet already rich in cholesterol has little appreciable effect. It has been well established in rigorously controlled feeding experiments that adding dietary cholesterol to a diet that is low in cholesterol can significantly raise serum cholesterol in humans. An addition of 200 milligrams of cholesterol per day to a cholesterol-free diet has been shown to raise serum cholesterol by as much as 20%. Gunners then says that in the other 30% named hyper-responders, there is a mild elevation in LDL cholesterol, but HDL, which is protective, also goes up. The same is true with saturated fat. It also raises HDL, the good cholesterol. I had a look at one of the studies that Gunners linked to, and it compares three different diets, but all are still high in fat. Therefore, of course, this high fat diet will raise cholesterol, including the good cholesterol. People rationalize their high total cholesterol levels by saying that they also have high HDL levels. Unfortunately, tens of thousands of people die from heart attacks with this false assumption. People on healthy vegetarian diets are sometimes told to eat meat because their HDL levels are quite low, like only 25 milligrams per deciliter. Yet their total cholesterol is only 125 milligrams per deciliter, a total cholesterol level that makes them virtually immune to heart disease. HDL cholesterol is a risk factor, not a disease. No one dies of low HDL. They die of rotten arteries. Focusing on risk factors causes little or no improvement in overall health. To get the health we deserve, we need to correct the cause of the problem, an unhealthy diet and lifestyle, not the signs of disease, the risk factors. Gutters then states something that a lot of low-carb promoters do. He says that even when saturated fat and or cholesterol cause mild increases in LDL, this is not a problem because they change the LDL particles from small, dense LDL very bad, to large LDL, which is protective. Studies show that people who have mostly large LDL particles have a much lower risk of heart disease. Let me point you to a case study that found that a 30-year-old woman with a healthy body weight who had been following a carbohydrate-restricted diet for three and a half years had developed xanthomas on her hands and a chronically elevated serum cholesterol level of 940 milligrams per deciliter. The composition of the woman's diet was as follows. Each day she had consumed 8 to 12 eggs, one or two lean steaks or half a small chicken and half to one liter of milk. Sometimes some cottage cheese or tomatoes enriched the menu and on rare occasions fruit. She completely avoided butter, bread, potatoes, rice, noodles, alcohol, 
or any other food or beverage containing carbohydrate. The daily cholesterol intake, which was mainly derived from the egg yolks, was about 3,500 milligrams. The total calorie intake was about 2,000 calories, 35% protein, 55% fat, and 10% carbohydrates. The woman was advised to change her diet, and in particular to stop eating eggs. After 16 days, her serum cholesterol dropped to 750 milligrams per deciliter, and after several years, dropped to 188, and the lipid deposits on her skin cleared up. How come these large LDL particles cause such a problem in this woman, if it's healthy to have a lot of them? Because it's not healthy. Gunners continues. Therefore, it is not surprising to see that in population studies, including hundreds of thousands of people, saturated fat and cholesterol are not associated with an increased risk of heart disease. My response to this statement is that it's one thing to not increase your risk factor and another thing to eliminate the risk completely. Gunners then says, in fact, some studies show that saturated fat is linked to a reduced risk of stroke. Gunners then links to a study. Again, I ask myself, what kind of study is this? The context of this study says, a few ecological and cohort studies in Asian populations suggest an inverse association of the intake of both fat and saturated fat with the risk of stroke. However, data amongst Western populations are scant. So this study that I'm gonna link to was done on a group of Western men who were not eating a low fat diet. They were simply recalling what they ate in the last 24 hours. Mean intakes were 10,975 kilojoules for energy, with about 39% of energy from fat and 15% for saturated fat. These men were eating a high fat diet and a lot of their fat was coming from saturated fat. You can't simply compare unhealthy people to each other to see who gets fewer strokes. So what if some men who ate more saturated fat got fewer strokes than the men who ate more of the other types of fat? The effect of a low fat plant-based diet of these men isn't compared. The risk of stroke would have been even further reduced if men ate less fat. Gunners then says, when they put this to the test in actual human experiments, making people cut saturated fat and replacing it with heart healthy vegetable oils, which happen to lower cholesterol, it actually increases the risk of death. Gunners is basically saying, eat saturated fat because vegetable oils are unhealthy. But both of them are bad, why not cut out both of them? The human body runs on glucose. Excess fat and protein is only harmful to our body. Heart disease is the number one killer in the Western world, and it's not because people are eating whole plant foods. Dr. Esselstyn reversed heart disease in his patients with a low-fat plant-based diet. I'm a Esselstyn graduate, if you will. Um, about four years ago, I was told I needed a triple bypass, and I'd read the China study the day before my arteriogram, so the day after I couldn't work, I was scheduled for a triple bypass that Friday. I went out and found the book Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease and called my cardiologist and said, I'm not doing this. And so within six months, I had a normal stress test. My cholesterol was 114, LDL of 15. I felt better than I'd felt since I was 35. I'm 57 years old. So I knew that the diet was working. You might say meat isn't harmful. It's the processed junk that's the problem. That's only part of the story. To improve your health further, you need to eliminate the animal source products, including the naturally raised and grass-fed animals, because they can be just as bad as processed junk when it comes to the health of your heart and your body. If you want to do further reading on this topic, I've put links in the description box to two articles written by Travis from Health Longevity that details the effects of animal source foods in ancient civilizations where there was no such thing as packaged junk food. He highlights that findings from populations living before the 20th century suggest that similar to the findings from people studied in more modern times, a greater intake of minimally refined plant foods strongly predicts a lower prevalence of atherosclerosis and cardiovascular disease. Furthermore, these findings suggest that the traditional living populations that relied predominantly on naturally raised animal food suffered from complications related to cardiovascular disease at a relatively young age. Bottom line, to block that first step of heart disease, right, we need to eat more plants, less animals, because that means more fiber and less saturated fat and cholesterol. 
It appears our cholesterol can never be too low. The lower the better. Brand new studies have put the controversy to rest. In fact, the opposite may be true. Lower cholesterol means less heart disease risk, and now we know it may lower cancer risk as well. How do you get a total cholesterol of 150? A strictly plant-based diet. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in my next one.